Before we get started, I'd like to inform the viewers that there's a f ton of characters and places that have weird pronunciations and are associated with darkness, so bear with us. We have J.R. Tolkien to thank for this. So, there's a ranger of Gondor named Talion who stays at the Black Gate of Mordor. He and his family are murdered in a sacrificial cutting of everyone's throats by the Black Hand of Sauron, but the poor son of a bitch doesn't fully die, even though they clearly slice his neck open. Instead, he lives in between the world of the living and the world of the dead. Think of it as sort of like Middle Earth's version of the crow, if, if that helps at all. It might not. If you don't know, go check that out. When Talion realizes that he's just been killed, but he's still not dead, he meets Celebrimbor, who's basically a ghost elf living in purgatory. Celebrimbor is a key figure in the Lord of the Rings mythology, but he doesn't know that yet because he has amnesia. Go figure. He basically possesses Talion in order to find out why the hell he still hasn't gone to elf heaven. And so the two embark on a journey so Celebrimbor can uncover his past and Talion can get revenge for the murder of his wife and son. Then how do we break this curse? We find the one who cast it on us, the Black Hand of Sauron. Talion runs into a hobbit formerly known as Smeagol and now Gollum who has been stalking him for a while in search of his Gollum leads Talion to relics that give him gnarly visions of Celebrimbor's past, and with every metallic headband or weird weapon that Talion touches, Celebrimbor's past is warped into his head. And that's how we come to learn that Celebrimbor, besides having the most luscious Pantene hair of all elven time, is the individual who crafted the One Ring after being tricked by Sauron in disguise. And here we thought elves were so much smarter than us. After Talion annihilates the Hammer of Sauron, he meets Lithariel, who happens to look a lot like Daenerys from Game of Thrones, probably because of the hair and alluring accent, and overall hotness. Lithariel takes Talion to her mother, Queen Marwyn, and despite the Queen's deteriorating Crypt Keeper-like health, she manages to tell Talion that the Dark Lord Sauron is coming back to Mordor. Marwyn instructs Talion to find a vulnerable orc warchief so that Talion can take control of an orc army in preparation of Sauron's return. Rather than use persuasion or any viable military tactics, Celebrimbor just sticks his hand on Griblik the orc's head and a pale blue light washes away the creature's free will. You could call it brainwashing, but we call it uh, ghost uh, elf magic uh, power? Dead elf ghost? Brainwashing magic? Oh, we're gonna go with sorcery. Once Talion gains control of an orc army, he goes back to Marwyn only to find out that she's been possessed by Saruman. You remember him, the bad white wizard played by Count Dooku in the Lord of the Rings trilogy? Yeah, you know. Talion and Lithriel break the curse and Marwyn goes back to normal. She gives Talion intel about the Black Hand and urges him to go back and take care of unfinished business. With the help of a mouthy dwarf named Torvin, Talion learns how to hunt Karagors and Grog, both of which are common within Mordor. But most importantly, Talion learns that hunting is not really a sport. It's an art. I think he's dead. Once Talion masters hunting, he and his army trek to Ered Glamhoth to kill the Black Hand. Instead of finding the Black Hand, Talion and Celebrimbor encounter the dentally challenged Tower of Sauron, yet another highly dangerous minion of the Dark Lord who sounds exactly like Shao Kahn in Mortal Kombat. <laughs> the Dark Lord forgives you, Celebrimbor. The tower reveals that Celebrimbor chose Talion to be his vessel in order to find answers about his past. Dun dun dun! But wait, there's more! Celebrimbor can release Talion from being banished from death at any time! Dun dun dun! Yes, that's all you are, Ranger. A vessel for the Ringmaker. Talion ends up stabbing the tower and after putting his and Celebrimbor's differences aside, travels to the Black Gate only to find... Gollum? Yeah, well... Gollum shows up, but of course, still no ring for that little bastard. That comes later. 
Italian finally faces the Black Hand, who is conveniently possessed by Sauron. Through the Black Hand, the Dark Lord takes physical form and almost obliterates Talion. With the ghostly help of Celebrimbor, however, Talion defeats Sauron, slash the Black Hand, and the Black Hand is dead, but not Sauron. That comes much later. And rather than joining his family in death, like he intended to, Talion declares that the time has come for a new ring. Great. Let's solve this whole powerful destructive ring problem by, I don't know, creating another powerful destructive ring.